Okay, I'm gonna do a uh, initial test on this thing. I looked underneath, nothing looked like it was short or anything. I've got a little cheater cord hooked up to it. Uh, all the tubes are populated in there. I'm gonna bring it up on my Variac and my dim bulb. And see what we got. on Let's get a little more juice I'll go up to you. just about a hundred sound hum Okay. That's the funo. Well, at least I know that everything else is working right. Just going to go in and replace all the caps and what little uh, resistors I need to replace and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, we're going to start off with the uh, chassis now. Uh, I kind of went over this last time and talked about the bulb being too hot and burning the, the screen here. Talked about that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, underneath. And I'll show you uh, what all we have there. Pretty dirty. Okay, here we go. So here's the underneath. We have um, a couple uh, filter caps here. Looks like three. Uh, doesn't look original. Well, I mean, it's original, but it looks like it's had some work done to it. These aren't original. This isn't. Um, I was told this is what was called a gimmick. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I read up on them a little bit. They don't do really do anything. Just replace them with a cap, and it's no big deal. I guess what they were doing before was filtering out... Um, different wavelengths that they didn't want to receive into the radios. Uh, I can't remember what, what wavelength that was off the top of my head, but that's what that was for. So it doesn't do anything other than that, so when I replace that, it's just going to be a regular cap. So I'll go through here and start popping these things out. These look like they're just held in with a little metal Save that. Oh, that might be original. Filco twenty. Let's go down here. Hmm.
than I thought, huh? Come on out of there. Watch me wrestle a capacitor here. How fun. Same one. Also 20. And this guy up here. Which I thought was the original. Well, maybe they are all original. That's pretty crimped on there. Oof, that one has a uh, 40. So I'll pull those guys out. I'll go through and uh, make a list of what I need. Doesn't look like that's, there's too, too many things in here. Not that difficult. Pretty straightforward. And then, uh, once I get that done, I'll also uh, clean up these pots. That's not a pot. Clean up these pots. And uh, clean up the tube sockets, too. And then I'll start with the top. All right. So yeah, I'm on a uh, quick update on this. I've got, since this is the 125, um, I got three electrolytics. I have 40 up here that I'm replaced with a 47. And then I have two 15s, which I had two 16s, so I replaced those. Now I'm starting to go through and uh, repopulate these caps here as I go. So I don't want to bore you with all of it, but uh, that's what it looks like so far. These original straps turned out nice. I'll tighten that one down after I get the uh, new electrical cord through and make them all nice like those. All right, there's a new cord put in. And strap cut down. Those look nice and neat. There we go. Real quick, I went ahead and recapped everything. Now I have two... Where are they at? 0.01s, one here, one here. And I don't have any right now, I have some on order. Uh, but for now, I went ahead and put some two uh, 008s in here, just to, to see how it goes. Now this unit's already on, no hum, no nothing. Uh, you can hear a slight noise in the speaker. This speaker, uh, the coil needs to run through the circuit to get the thing to even work, to get the power to go through. And where's it at here? Right here. So that needs to be a 1300 ohm coil. That thing was about 200. <laughs> so when it was going and I was playing, I just had this massive feedback or not feedback but noise just just i mean i can get in a station but it was terrible it was just terrible so i i have this one here that i had laying around it's a 512 ohm and this coil that was in with this speaker isn't the right one either this one's supposed to be 270 ohm on one side and three on the other. It's like one and a half and a hundred, 180 on the other side. I mean, it works. So now with everything hooked up, I just got a regular speaker on this guy. And violence. 
still touchy. It threatened on the... the very foundations of representative government, we were told. And it only existed. So it goes up pretty loud. Except a black president. Um, but I'll have to find another speaker. This is just a speaker I had laying around that I can test with. Um, so I got to find an oval one that will fit, fit in the case. Uh, so Monday I'll have these ones come in. It doesn't really affect it whether this is in or not. I put in some point zero twos and it was the same thing, but I didn't want to leave point zero twos, so I went in order to point zero one. So Monday I'll replace those with the O ones and then everything in here is done inside here. Uh, and then I can start working on this pot was really really bad to where I could barely touch it and I would get all kinds of noise so hit it with deoxid ran it a few times and now it's all good There's a um, if I go to phono not bad I don't have a needle or a cartridge hooked up to it so it's not gonna make any noise but there we are. I gotta find a new speaker. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use these unless I can find another one. I don't don't think I have one. I have I have this guy here, which is closer and it sounds better, but it's just ugly. It's got tar all over it. Um, came out of an older older radio. Um, so I'd be better off if I can find a better one. But yeah, if not, that'll be fine. All right, I'll uh, keep going. I'm gonna work on the top here next. Um, clean up everything up here. And then once I get those two caps in, I'll go ahead and uh, align it and then we'll go from there. So my All new right. caps arrived and I took out those temporary wands and installed the new ones here. Turn it on, works fine, works good. I'll do the alignment once I'm done with the radio and put it inside the case once the case is done because I can mount it, I have to have the dial indicator so I know where the, the channels are, the stations are. And since it's mounted in that case kind of upside down because it hinges, you're, you're able to, to uh, reach the uh, alignment control. So I went ahead and cleaned the chassis up a combination of um, contact cleaner sprayed onto a q-tip and just kind of went around and cleaned up all the grime and then I went back with rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and, and cleaned up that this was a mess this had all kinds of stuff on it wouldn't come off with the contact cleaner wouldn't come off with rubbing alcohol I actually had to take some thousand grit and sand this down and then I took some uh, steel wool and hit it again cleaned all this up i don't know if the dial indicator i'll have to look online see if somebody else but i don't i don't know if the dial indicator is colored or not mine wasn't it was kind of rusty <coughs> excuse me so i had to go and lightly hit it with that same sandpaper just to kind of get that grime off of there i'll probably paint that red because I, I put it into the case just to see how it looks from behind the glass and you can barely see it so I'll probably hit that uh, with some red paint I took off the existing uh, diffuser screen here just like everybody else's it's got hot and burnt and discolored and it's kind of weird um, so I needed a replacement I haven't uh, made one up yet but on a suggestion from Ron, from Ron's Vintage Electronics Shop and Workbench, he suggested a uh, lamp shade. Now that the insides of the lamp shade, you know, have that kind of diffuser material inside and it's already ready for, for light bulbs and stuff. I went online on Amazon to see how much they would cost and a 12 by 12 inch sheet was like 10 bucks. I got this one <laughs> at a thrift shop in town. Two fifty. 
brand new, never used. So I'll pull the material off of that, and then I have a, what is that, a 18 by two and a half feet, maybe, material for 250. I'll pull that off. I'll use the old one as a template, lay that down, draw it out, cut it out, and then reinstall it in here. I have a, another light bulb coming, not this style. Uh, again, Ron suggested a uh, uh, an LED equivalent. It's the same shape, but it's got LEDs inside. That should be coming shortly too. I'll install that. Cleaned up the uh, transformers here a little bit so they weren't so gunky. I still gotta find a oval speaker to put in. I'll do that. I have some flocking coming for the turntable. So once that arrives, um, I'll do a quick video on that as well. So, making progress. Okay, I pulled the material off of the screen, cut it off the, the wire, and I'm left with a little bit of uh, glue residue and a little bit of material residue. Um, took a little rubbing alcohol. Just doing a rubbing alcohol rag. And it came off relatively easy. I mean, yeah, you, you gotta scrub a little bit, but clean. And behind the light, it'll work good. So, I'll lay this on here, trace it out, cut it out, and then I have my replacement. Well, there you go. I'll cut out. A lot wider, cleaner. Much better. They installed a new mercury switch here. Then I had to go into this piece here, this adjustment screw here, to adjust this piece on where it pivots because this right here gets moved back and forth when the door opens and it tips the mercury switch on and off as the door is open and closed when I first did this I had this mercury switch switched the other way around so it was actually turning it on when I opened it and turning it off when I closed it now it's now it's right to switch it around did some fine adjustments and now it all works i'll show you in a second here okay here it is on the lever's all the way out like the door is open see the pin goes down now as i push it in like the door is shut the pin should come up and it turns open the door turns it off arm moves over on arm moves over towards record I'll adjust this just a little bit. There we go. And let me show you. Now, these, if you look at the, uh, try to look at the dots that are more standing still versus turning. So this one here. So we open that up. Take a look at that. And that one is seventy eight but minus two percent. So it's still still within good good range. So all's good. Okay, I got the parts of the uh Philco Taking apart, I got the door off the main body here. And the camera now, everything out of it, glass out of it. And we'll, since there's no real grain here, I'm gonna see what I can do. Maybe I can, maybe I can go real light and try to keep what's there, but we'll see. 
I'll start uh, scraping, maybe sanding, and see how it goes. Okay, done scraping in the middle part anyway. It looks like a lot of that faux grain kind of stuff stayed. The middle will have to be painted, but that's fine. Now we'll start on the side. All right, all stripped down, all sanded. I tried to keep the original faux wood grain here, but it just I just couldn't do it, so I sanded it smooth. So I'll stain it, try to bring out what a grain there is there. Sides will be painted, and here will be painted. So I'll be stained. So I'll be stained both sides. There you go. Okay, so there's the final on the stain. I don't think I'm gonna go any darker. Green kind of came out pretty good. I mean, there's some imperfections that are on there that I just can't get out unless I sand too far down. I just don't want to do that. So I think it turned out pretty good. Of course, this is just the stain part, and once you uh, clear coat it, it'll be a little darker. This color is um, gunstock. Got about five coats on there. So I'll come back, I'll get some uh, lacquer paint. I'm not sure if I'm going to go black on the sides or that, you know, dark brown that's kind of the original like that over there. Um, I'm still I'm still deciding. But looking pretty good. Okay. A uh, new little issue. It's not a bad issue. It's just something I had to replace. On this mechanism here was this rubber cap. Now it's split. Can't use it. It's just going to fall off. What it does is it's it goes on this end here on this side, on the back side. And as the arm for the record player gets to the middle of the record, it gets into that last groove and it just goes back and forth. And as it goes back and forth, it's supposed to hit that rubber here and then cause this to tilt and turn it off. Well, finding a little piece of rubber like this, I had to look around a while. Uh, Ron, I've talked about him in the last video. He I, he used a, an eraser. I tried that on mine. I, I couldn't get it to work. So I went to the local hardware or the uh, auto shop. Bought some vacuum caps. This one, this size here, is the right diameter. Cut it down to fit the end here because I only have so much room on this thing. And it goes right on the end. Let me get that on and I'll show you. Okay, so, uh, there it is on the end. You can see that. So again, when this moves over, now, well, it's going to be hard here because it's not laying down flat. So I'll have to go down flat here to show you. Set this now that's like turned on so as the arm goes now it hits that when it comes to the end and turns it off so let me show you with it running so the door gets closed door is closed one's running just in the middle. Turns it off. So that was like two bucks. Something like that. Well, that's it on that. I'll keep going. Got the door mounted on now. And uh, let's check the uh, mechanism.
that works well. Let's move the, uh, well, the door's open now, so let's move the arm over. Okay, that turns off. And let's move the arm over here. Let's see if the arm goes back. Perfect. All right, there we go. Okay, I could not find an oval speaker anywhere. Nothing to replace the original one here. So what I'm gonna do is I found four inch speaker cabinet, remove the speakers out of there. And here it is, nice big magnet, four inch, perfect for that size. And it also came with a tweeter. Now I know these things didn't come with tweeters, and I know they didn't. This particular one didn't come with a permanent magnet, although they did convert them later to permanent magnets. At least not these nice ones. I'm gonna put it in anyway because I feel, hey, if I'm restoring it, I want to make it sound nice anyway. So what I'm doing, same size board. Mark the holes for the speakers. Mark the cutout for the grill plate. And these will mount side by side like this on the board. So hopefully that'll sound a lot nicer. I'm sure it will. Um, I'm going to cut this out. I have uh, some fabric on order. It isn't here yet. So I'll cut this out, mount the speakers, and then I'll show you how I that had works. an issue. I put the cartridge in, and I wasn't getting any sound. I, I was getting a lot of feedback, a lot of, not feedback, a lot of hum. Wasn't getting any sound. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to check it. Ran the power, the, the positive from the cartridge over to the uh here and bypass the pot and see if the pot was faulty um and it worked worked pretty well so i thought okay well i'll concentrate on the pot and i so i took an old meter to it and it was it was fine i couldn't figure out well what the hell's wrong with it so i decided you know what i'm gonna check um the shield from here to the chassis that went through that was good thought about it for a while okay uh, I'm, I'm gonna look into this a little bit more I'm, I'm gonna look at the schematic some more and I damn I just couldn't figure it out so I decided to check the center line this one here not the shield the center one here off the resistor and it was grounded the chassis i checked the connection over here it's not grounded there i checked over here into the chassis here it's not grounded there but somewhere it's grounded together now i guess it could be the shielding could be split somewhere the inside and it's and it's touching somewhere inside this and it's grounding out i don't know i i clipped it from here clipped it off and then ran the positive from the cartridge through a resistor I, I have it through a 62 ohm right now I went from I, I was kind of following Ron's uh, little diagram on what he had now his his is a little different He's running on this schematic here. Mine's different. Mine's got a little different uh, setup. Um, I tried his setup. It didn't work. Um, so I, I gradually just went through resistors and, and brought it down to 62 ohms in line. This has it going through a... Get in here. 10 meg. Now that's going through this cartridge here too. Um, but now I'm down to a 62 ohm. 
and it sounds pretty good now and I got plenty of volume let me kick out my mercury mercury switcher now that I ran it across <laughs> I'll do that without sliding the there we go Hand, dropping it. So now, all the way down, quiet. Now I got, now I got plenty of volume. So it's not the pot. <clears throat> it's not. Excuse me. It's not the pot. Uh, so I got to go in and replace this line here. Something shorted in there somewhere. So I go replace that. Uh, fix the resistor over here onto these tabs. I'm getting a little bit of feedback to this line. I mean, it's just. So once I go through a shield, shielded cable, it should be fine. So I'll do that and uh, we'll see how it sounds then. Okay, check this out. I figured it out. It wasn't my line, so I'll probably reuse this because it's it's fine. There's no short in it. But look, some moron that worked on this before. Hook the, hook the line that goes to the signal goes into the volume pot from the photo. Comes to here. Okay, that's where the red goes. Goes through the cap or through a resistor to here. Uh, the black comes in and ties into here to ground, which is fine. This one was <laughs> not getting any signal. I didn't realize it. It's grounded out. So. Whoever messed with this before grounded out that signal to chassis ground, which is why I wasn't getting anything, which is probably why I was getting a whole lot of hum and everything else too. So I'm going to clean all this up, put the new wire back in, uh, put my resistor in here. It ends up being a 100 ohm in here which is the best sound that I get uh, any more than it's the volumes down and any to any, any lower than that it just doesn't sound good so 100 is about where I figured and I'll rewire all this back up uh, and see how it goes but I can't do it right now the power is out of course here in California so I can't even run an iron I'm running all this right now on a generator. I guess I can try the generator, but anyway, that's it. Okay, real quick. Uh, I wanted to show you how I mounted this uh, cartridge in here. I did a uh, same kind of screws that were there, same size actually. But I had to put a spacer in. Everybody's using different kinds of spacers. I just use these Teflon spacers. You can get it like Lowe's or whatever. Fit in there real nice. Brings the needle to about the right height. Real clean looking. Top looks clean. The wires, I had to redo the wires. Um, it was just bad. So I took some uh, regular RCA plugs, cut off the ends. Got the wire out because it's shielded on the inside, and then put the see those solder the two ends that came with the cartridge, and then heat shrink tube around it. And this is nice and flexible, so it'll go right in, right in here, and run through. And we'll hook it up. 
and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, I just uh, flopped the uh, plate there, so we'll see how it goes. Well, that's set for, I think it said 15 hours. And uh, I'll brush it off and see how it looks. Okay, it's the next day. We're gonna uh, brush this off and see what we got here. Uh, looks pretty good. Doesn't look like a whole lot's coming off, so that's good. Just give it a, a light brush here. I made sure I uh, got plenty on here. I figured, well, if it's only going to stick so much, so whatever's left, just going to brush off. And then I'll just reclaim it and reuse it. So far, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like a whole lot's coming off, so that's that's good. sides a little bit well that looks pretty good so you can see how much I have left and the, the kit itself quite a bit here so I got plenty to do more if I want so I would take this turntable out outside, blow it off real lightly, and uh, reclaim the rest of the stuff and put it in the player. Okay, so I tried putting a um, 200K resistor in line with the output of the cartridge, and it had good good sound, but the volume, I had it cranked all the way up, and it was loud, but it wasn't as loud as it could be. So I stuck a uh, 100 back in, 100k back in um, and that should be plenty of volume now a good volume now all the way down it's all the way up I'm sure you can't really tell on the video there but it cranks up pretty well now. Well, this particular radio was missing the antenna back here. So I'm gonna wind a new antenna. I made a, a I guess, essentially a bobbin. It fits in there, it's the right size, three quarters inch thick. Um, I do have to trim it a little bit though. I got a gap enough for a wire, but I need a gap on both sides here, enough for two. So I need to trim off maybe a 16th or a little more on both sides. And then uh, I'll start winding the antenna. Okay, now I should have enough room here to go ahead and wind it. It's enough room for two wires, one on each side. So I'll get to winding and we'll see how that looks. Okay, I started the winding here. I cut a hole through there, ran the wire through and started my winding there and wrapped it all around till I got to the end and then brought that through to there. Now I'm gonna probably, uh, I'm gonna find some thin paper and what I'll probably do um, is lay it on top and I might use some of this, some, Mod Podge um, to help keep all that together. It's pretty flexible. Um, it's made for paper and stuff, so it should saturate the paper pretty well. And inside that, once I get that side done and let it set up, I'll pull it off and then I'll probably uh, stick another piece of paper on the other side, follow up with some more Mod Podge, and that'll be it. And then Install it in there. All right, that all dried up, and I wanted to remove a 
the coil, but before I did, I went ahead and drilled in each corner because those are the corners that I would stick into. I wrapped the paper on here and here, but not the corner. So I drilled those out so I can pop those edges out so I can slide this thing out without it catching on anything. So, all right, I chipped away carefully on the ends of loosening that up because that's where it was sticking. Now we're going to try to pull this off. Let's see how well it comes up. Now I'll set it in the radio and see how it fits. All right, there you go. Fits in there pretty nice. Uh, this will have to be, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, whether I'm just going to glue it up or or not. But And then these wires will go down here to connect to these guys. And that's it. I think that turned out pretty well. Keep going. I got the decals now. I'll put those on and I got some cloth. <clears throat> cloth that I ordered. I don't really like the look of it, but I do have another one that's different. They're, these are typically a gold. Um, and I ordered a gold. I don't like the way it looks. Um, I have another one that's more of a dark, almost a, uh, almost a grayish. Um, but I'll show them both here. Right, I'm second. about to put in the uh, decals. I went ahead and laid them on there, measured it out where I wanted them, and cut these as close to the letters as I could and gave enough room on either side so when I slid these off, I know exactly where they're at, but they're not going to touch the tape. So I'll apply those, and then we'll see what it looks like. There they are all on there. I Like I said, I clipped them as close as I could to the lettering just to try to minimize the lines that you usually see when people put these on. I mean, you can barely see it at that angle. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Get these knobs on and let's see. See how these guys look. Uh, let's see here. Get on there. There you go. That looks pretty good. I want to go over one more thing with this uh, adjustment. I noticed after I put this into the cabinet, my dials didn't line up. Uh, I couldn't go all the way to one side to hit uh, the, uh, the 550 mark. So I had to take it back out of the cabinet and adjust it. Now I noticed on this particular model, there's indicators here on both sides. I adjusted mine so it lined up with this mark here which also coincides, let me slide it off, all the way to the other side, with that mark. Now, I, I've noticed a lot of older radios, they uh, have little marks, and if they don't have marks built in, they have little pencil marks of where the dials should be, not so they're seen on the outside, but when you're servicing them, you can see them there, and that's what these are here. So here's the finished product. Nearly flopped. This entire lower half was all completely disassembled, cleaned, greased up, new felt put on, uh, heat shrink here to help protect those and keep the mechanisms quiet, new cartridge put on. 
Um, I didn't have the original speaker. Uh, the speaker that I had wasn't worth a damn anyway. Um, but I decided to put a new speaker system in anyway. So I did that permanent magnet. I didn't want to have to re do a tube uh, lineup and everything like they did in the newer systems when they put a permanent magnet in there. So what I did is I kept, I put a, let me see it, right there, here. So there's a coil there, it's a choke. The original uh, schematic has the field coil for the speaker, but that also acts as a filter system and a choke for the power supply. So I, I couldn't omit that, I had to keep that in there. So I put one in here. Um, new output transformer with the speakers there. Um, the resistor was all still good. Repainted the inside, new board, cleaned up everything. Uh, put a new antenna in because it did not have one so I wired that in LED light in here instead of the regular incandescent everything was recapped any resistors bad redone any new uh, wires needed redone there a uh, new wire directly to the cartridge obviously a new uh, power cord let me show you how the mechanism works for a 12 inch. We always see the six or the regular 10 inch. So I'm gonna put a 12 inch in here and you can see how it works. So you push it in, it moves those out. And then we close it and then it starts. I don't have it turned on, so it's not gonna run right now. Let me, let me turn okay. it on real quick. I have it turned on now. So if you close the door, turns on, arm moves into position. Put a 12 inch in. It moves these arms here out and moves that mechanism up to allow for the 12 inch to go in, which also moves the arm. Close it up and we'll take a look at the outside. Okay, here's the outside, new grill. Uh, when I when I put it on the board, it was straight. Put it inside the case here, and it's a little off. You can tell by the squares here. I'm kind of thinking that might be because of the this lower piece here may have been installed a little bit off, but that's okay. Uh, black lacquer. I originally painted it brown. Didn't like it. The original was dark brown, couldn't find one dark enough, so I went ahead with black. Uh, the little grain decals that were on here before were so bad I couldn't re I couldn't use them, so I sanded those all down, stained those, and gave those uh, some clear poly. Up here, new decals like I showed you already. Uh, original glass there, that's still good, just a little bit of wear in here but that's that's still fine um i did have to like i said move this over here build an antenna because they didn't have one in it um so here's the antenna installed loop antenna wires come here go on underneath and get in and uh soldered into the top everything in the back There it is. I'm turning on the radio. You can hear the radio. Good morning about Kathy 
Griffith holding up a, a, a mannequin head. This thing's got plenty of volume. The paper. Come on, guys, toughen up. So, okay, so there it is, all complete. Now, I don't know if I'm going to keep this or put it on eBay. I'm not really sure. I, I like it, but I don't know. I've got to keep my my hobby going, you know. So there it is.